Jay Stono here. I'm excited about today because today we get to talk about the gray sea star. And at certain times of the year when we get low tides, we get a lot of these washing up. And there's some interesting facts about these. Um, in Texas, these are probably the most common ones that you'll find. Um, but we also have uh, like the banded sea stars, another good one. Um, uh, we, we got a couple other species. There's actually uh, uh, over 2,000 species around the world. So, you know, they're not that uncommon. It's just that uh, they're mainly nocturnal and they come out uh, at nighttime. And so during the day, they're kind of covered up with sand and they're in the water. So you don't get to see them that often unless the tide is like it is where it's pushed, pushed way out. Um, these can actually live to about 35 years, if you can believe that. That's pretty wild. Uh, uh, people uh, don't really eat these things. Uh, they don't have blood. They don't have a brain. There's no heart or anything like that. Um, they, some other names for this particular one, the, the gray sea star, uh, also called the lime sea star, um, the slender arms uh, sea star, because you know how slender the arms are. The um, one thing about these is that, in, which I find is really cool, is that they can actually lose an arm and regenerate it. And so the one that I'm holding here, actually uh, two of its arms, you can tell, were broken off. And so that's like when a fish comes and tries to bite it and breaks it off, they can actually start to regenerate that. And so that's what you're seeing right here is it looks like a normal arm and then it, it's kind of more narrow right here. Uh, this one is the same way. So that's what we're seeing there. I have seen these that have six arms, so that's rare. So if you ever find one with six arms, be sure to uh, take a picture and put it back in the water. Now this one uh, has been uh, obviously out of the water for a while, uh, it is dead. Uh, they really, you know, after three to five minutes of being out of the water, uh, you know, they, they really can't survive that long out of the water. So if you find one that's washed up, try to put it back in the water as soon as possible. My hands are actually kind of kind of smelling. But uh, these are actually related to like a sand dollar. Uh, sea urchins, you know, you might find sea biscuits every once in a while, little puffed up looking sand dollars. They're related to those. So they have uh, scales on top, they're kind of modified spines, and they do have some spines on the bottom, uh, or on the, the edges here, but if you look on the bottom, uh, they have feet, hundreds of feet, and uh, they, you can see them moving around and stuff like that, especially if you find a live one. That's how they, they're able to move, and they move real slow. Um, you know, not, they're not a fast mover. They're not made for speed. Um, they feed on um, snails uh, is one of the things. They, they can actually, if they find something dead out on the bottom of the ocean, they can actually uh, get on that and eat that, but you know, prefer snails. Their mouth is right at the bottom down here, right in the center, and so they can eat stuff there. They can also sift through the sand, you know, forge through the sand, uh, pull it up, eat, eat uh, microbes out of there, throw out. Uh, what they don't uh, eat, like eat, throw the sand out and stuff. So there's a number of different ways they can feed. Okay, now look at this sea star. This one looks like, it looks different than the other one, right? It actually has what looks like a disc that's uh, right in the middle. So this one's dead. You know, there's this idea that uh, these eat sand dollars. And so like that could be a sand dollar that's stuck right in the middle. So I got my handy dandy knife here. I thought I would just try to cut it open and see what we find. Yeah, it's definitely dead, a little smelly. Oh, oh man. Wow. And indeed it is. It's a sand dollar. It ate a whole sand dollar and it made the form into 
uh, a sand dollar disc right in the middle. So here's the piece. Now I broke it up. Unfortunately, there wasn't an easy way to get it out of there. But you can recognize a sand dollar when you see it. So another interesting thing about these uh, gray sea stars is that I guess they can eat sand dollars whole and consume them. And then I guess once they're done getting everything they want off of it, they just kind of spit out the rest of the stuff. But hey, something cool. Now what eats these? So their predators could be crabs, uh, some, some other fish, especially the bottom feeding fish. So think about stingrays, uh, other types of rays. Uh, and then once they wash up on land, birds become a problem. So these become uh, food for birds, which I guess is part of the whole cycle, right? Now, uh, these spawn annually and you cannot tell the difference between a male versus a female. And so if somebody ever tells you they can tell the difference, uh, at least for the Gracie star, uh, you gotta question that. And then the last thing I guess is um, just knowing when to find them. And so I've, uh, I've been on certain beaches before where I've literally found a thousand of them washing up. And it has to do, especially uh, after cold fronts and stuff like that, when the, the water gets pushed out from that north wind and we have real low tides, so think January, February time frame, you can just get massive die-offs of these. But with that really cool organism here, if you ever find one, put it back. Uh, this one is dead, although I'm gonna go put it back. You know, I, I'm an optimist, so I'm always thinking, okay, uh, what can it survive? But uh, okay, with that, that's it for this beach coming. The Gray Sea Star. We'll talk to you later. Bye.